The Las Vegas Raiders fell yesterday to the Jacksonville Jaguars, and they are now two and six. Their season's likely over. Like it is a very long shot for the Raiders to win uh, and make the playoffs. Most playoff teams lose about six games max. At seven games, you're probably not going to make the playoffs, and the Raiders are already right there. Um, unless they win the rest of their games, chances are they're not going to make the playoffs. Now, today I want to talk about. The Raiders and kind of what I saw on tape after watching the coaches film and really give you guys my thoughts and opinions. You know, I do think the Raiders showed some good flashes, especially in the first half. The offense was really clicking. Derek Carr had a couple of really nice throws. Uh, the two Devontae Adams touchdowns. One, he was wide open. Derek Carr put it there and, and uh, Adams caught the ball. I think that was a really nicely designed play. Uh, they ran a guy in a jet sweep. They play action at the same time. They had a tight end, you know, fake with the jet sweep. Um, and it got the entire defense to freeze. And Devontae was in a one-on-one -on -one situation with the safety. And we hit. Derek Carr hit. We scored a touchdown. On the second Devontae Adams uh, touchdown, Derek Carr put a really nice pass uh, right underneath the top of the corner and the safety that was kind of bracketing over the top. And it was a touchdown. Great job by Derek Carr on those plays. But... The thing is, is being up 17 points, 20 to 7 at some point, 20 to 10, you got to continue to score points. And I think the, the part that really lost the Raiders the game was this play right here. Uh, this play right here, uh, the score you guys can see is 17 to 7, 55 seconds left in the second quarter. Derek Carr is going to throw a pass. Keep in mind, this is a designed play by Josh McDaniels. 100% of the time, it's going to go to the running back. The running back runs a wheel route. Derek Carr floats a pass, and this pass ends up falling way short. Now, some people have talked about this play, and they've said, well, uh, the running back should have potentially came back to the football. Right. Or the referee should have thrown a pass interference because the guy clearly gets here early. Um, and the thing is, is the NFL says, has, has made an effort that we are no longer going to um, call pass interferences on underthrown passes. And that's exactly what this is. This isn't a back shoulder throw. This isn't uh, anything other than just a, a bad underthrown football. Uh, the thing is, is Derek Carr happens to float this ball for whatever reason. Uh, Amir Abdullah clearly beats the rookie linebacker. At some point, he's like two, two and a half, three yards ahead of the linebacker. Uh, and for some reason, Derek Carr floats this pass. Makes zero sense. It's almost like he was kind of scared to actually uh, put some, uh, put the trajectory lower, flatter. Put some power into this football because Derek Carr should have been able to complete this for a touchdown. This play, this pass right here at this point, the Raiders should have been up 24 to 7, right? This play right here, I think, was a big momentum shift because Jacksonville was able to get off the field and hold the Raiders, whose offense was absolutely on fire. They were able to hold those to a field goal. And at this point, it was 20 to 7, and they were able to drive downfield and get a field goal. And we went into halftime 20 to 10. And from that point forward, the Jaguars scored 17 points and the Raiders scored zero points. And I think that was the difference in the game. Now, obviously, we're kind of talking about Derek Carr and his bad throws. Um, we're going to talk about some of the other guys as well. We just happened to start with Derek Carr first. Um, here's another play. This one uh, comes with the all-22 angle. Obviously, the last one was the broadcast angle. Um, but I want you guys to watch Matt Collins on this play. Matt Collins runs free and this play should have been a touchdown. Now, I understand... Right In any given play, uh, it looks like Derek Carr initially is looking right at Hollins and he decides not to test Hollins and he probably looked away at that point and decided that he's ultimately going to check it down. But the thing is, is these plays don't happen that often. Guys don't run free for touchdowns that often, but when it happens, you have to connect. Right, I am positive that the top quarterbacks in the NFL hit on these plays right here. Matt Collins has his hand up, and this should have been a touchdown. And the thing is, is this play came with, I believe, either three minutes or six minutes left in the game, somewhere in between there. And I think this play right here would have put us up 27 to 24 and ultimately won the football game. Sometimes your quarterback has to make big time throws, and Derek Carr did not. Derek Carr had two, and even technically three, if you really want to count the final drive with like a minute and five seconds left. He had three drives. For him to basically tie the game for the Raiders or put us up. And he didn't get it done. 
Um, so although we're starting with Derek Carr, there's other things I kind of saw on tape. I think Derek Carr ultimately lost the Raiders this football game uh, with some of these throws. Now, you can say he also did a really good job in the first half, and you wouldn't be lying. Uh, his pass to Devontae Adams was really nice, the first one. Um, but overall, you know, when you look at Derek Carr, um, we're 2-6. and six. We're not going to make playoffs. Most likely, we're not going to make playoffs. I think it's we're, we're at the point where we really have to think about, is Derek Carr actually regressing? Like, has Derek Carr taken a step backwards, Right. Is him being 31 years old, is it time that maybe he's done or he at this point is is just no longer the quarterback because he's had some really bad ball placement uh, issues this year, right? The Darren Waller throw to uh, Derwin James in the first game. Um, there's been a couple passes to Keelan Cole where he's just missed him. There's been a couple of throws where a guy's running on the sidelines and Derek Carr's not able to have the ball fall in bounds. It falls out of bounds, right? Um, just some of these small little issues with Derek Carr's ball placement, um, not seeing receivers that are kind of open. Although I do understand this play, right? He, you know, he has a natural progression from left to right. Uh, and if he doesn't see it, he's not going to take the shot. But I will say this, at some point, you have to read the way a guy is lined up, the way a guy's body positioning is, right? Number 37 has his left hand out. He's literally telling the safety that, hey, you take this guy over the top. At the same time, Derek Carr should have read that Matt Collins is running a deep route. There's no way 37 is going to be able to flip his hips and stay on top of Matt Collins. Derek Carr should have thrown this pass out there to Hollins, and he decided not to, and he decided to check it down. A check down doesn't win football games. They will never win, and it hasn't won for the Raiders. It'll it, you'll, you'll be 2-6 and six with check downs. All right, this pass right here should have been the touchdown, or at the very least, you know, I don't know how Derek Carr would have actually connected with Hollins. Maybe he doesn't connect with him. Maybe Hollins drops the pass. Um, but either way, you got to take your shot when you have your shots, right? Um, let's talk about the offensive line a little bit. Derek Carr was officially sacked two times. Um, he was pressured a couple of times. A couple of throws came out a little early. But Derek Carr dropped back, uh, I think, 41 times was the official number. Right? Or maybe it was one or two less than that. Derek Carr dropped back around 40 times, and generally speaking, I'd say of those 40 times, I'd say about 35 of those, he was kept clean, right? I think the offensive line, although they really struggled against the Saints in pass pro, I think had a really good game against the Jags. Now, um, unfortunately for the Raiders, Josh Jacobs couldn't get it going. Uh, he had 17 carries for 67 yards, but realistically, if you take away his three biggest runs, the guy had like 30 yards on the other 14 carries. The Jacksonville drivers really wanted to stop the run, and they went all out to try to defend the run, and they they stopped us for the most part, right? Obviously, Jacobs had 67 yards, 3.9 yards per attempt. Understandable that his three long ones kind of screwed that away. Uh, and he obviously had a, I think it was a 23-yard one that kind of came back, Um Josh Jacobs was okay, but I think the offense line had a good game. In fact, I think guys, uh, Colin Miller had a couple losing reps, but for the most part, he played much better this week than last week. I think I saw Trayvon Walker beat him one time and Arden Key beat him one time. Outside of those two losses, I think he had a really good game. Um, run game, we didn't look as good, but I think our run scheme may be a little flawed. We don't have a whole lot of different types of runs. Uh, we have you know, a crack toss play that we run. We have the power play where we have a guard and a tight end pull. Um, and then outside of that, then we'll have like our power runs where we put our fullback in the ISO situation with the linebacker. And that's, those are like the three runs that we really run, right? I want to see more zone runs, right? Um, but the O-line, in my opinion, did a good job, right? The O-line, in my opinion, really held up. They did an okay job against the Jags. Even in, in run blocking, I, I, I think, um, you know, the Jags definitely committed to the run. They played a lot of cover three. They kept that extra guy in the box. O-line looked pretty good. Colt Miller, uh, Jermaine Illuminor, big, big shout out to him. He absolutely took out Josh Allen. You know, we should not underestimate how big of an impact uh, Jermaine Illuminor had to shut down a top 10 edge player. Um, Josh Allen did absolutely nothing. I don't even remember seeing, hearing his name that he hit the quarterback or whatever, right? Uh, so real, real good game by him. Obviously, we talked about Monte Adams a little bit, uh, but the receivers in general kind of have been uh, disappointing, in my opinion. 
not a lot of yards after the catch for our receivers. And I, other than Devontae Adams, right? Devontae Adams, 146 yards, two touchdowns. Although most of that came in the first half, um, you know, you can you can say he still had a really good game, right? Drawing double coverage, drawing the safety towards him, uh, beating press coverage, getting separation, allowing Derek Carr to, to hit him on those four or five yard slants. Um, Adams had a great game, but the rest of the guys really did not. Um, Foster Moore had two catches for 42 yards. Hunter Renfro, three for 26. Hollins, two for 17. That's not going to cut it, right? We need these guys to step the hell up and make some plays. Like, the quarterback should be able to throw a couple of screen passes and have them go the distance once in a while, right? And I'm not saying the Raiders' uh, playmakers are bad. They're obviously not, but things just aren't working out right now. Uh, you can also say that Mac Hollins held on one play, and I think it was Foster Moreau had a pass interference on another play. And those two plays were big plays, right? You lose 20 yards, and you you basically kill. Although one of the drives was killed, the other one we ended up picking up first down, scoring a touchdown on. Um, but the receivers got to step up. They're not playing good enough. Um, on tape, obviously, I saw the two bad plays by uh, Morrow and Mac Collins. But even then, I don't know, so, something just feels off, right? I don't know if guys aren't, like, giving it 100% effort. And I hate to say that because I find it hard to believe they're not putting the effort in. But things really, really just look off for the Raiders receivers right now, besides Devontae Adams. Jumping to the defensive line. Uh, the Raiders defensive line, man, very disappointing. Uh, besides Max Crosby, who is obviously Max Crosby, Andrew Billing, shout out to him. He needs to be a Raider long term. Uh, he's fairly young. I, I believe he's 27. Don't quote me on that. I might I might be way off on that. Andrew Billings is a beast. Uh, he's the one Raiders defensive, interior defensive lineman, an offensive lineman in general, right outside of Cosby that I think has long-term potential for the Raiders. Andrew Billings was destroying the run. Uh, he was collapsing the pocket in pass pro. He was doing a really solid job. Uh, Max Crosby really didn't have that much of an impact. He did have a couple of pressures, but we didn't sack Trevor Lawrence at all. Um, maybe that's game planning. Maybe that's just a bad defensive line. Maybe that's Trevor Lawrence who ran it six times for 53 yards. You know, when a quarterback takes off running, sometimes it really benefits the offensive line because the pass rush is just a little bit slower at this point, right? Um but Christian Kirk and Marvin Jones and Zay Jones, uh, these guys weren't getting so open, right? It was just because the pass rush was very slow. And ultimately, I think the pass rush leads into the pass coverage on the back end between the linebackers and secondary. And I think the linebackers and secondary is really struggling at, at this point as well. Uh, Divine Diablo obviously got hurt early in the game. I think like the first or second play of the game. And Blake Martinez and Denzel Perryman were asked to play an extended amount of time. Uh, I think it's safe to say Blake Martinez after Divine Diablo, and he's maybe even better than Divine Diablo. But those two guys uh, should be the line. Assuming Divine Diablo's injury isn't long term, those two guys should play more for the Raiders. Um, I didn't see a whole lot of plays of Denzel Perryman just losing in coverage, but I'll be the first to tell you guys. I only watched the offense and defense once all the way through. A couple plays I watched two or three times, but I didn't focus 100% on Denzel Perryman on every single play. And I didn't look at every single situation to kind of know what his job or responsibility was. Um, but I do think that um, Blake Martinez looked really good, right? And from past tape that I've watched, Denzel Perryman does not, right? Um, but I do think the Raiders need to figure out their the defensive side. Um you know, some people are saying Trayvon Merrick is, is garbage. He's a bust. He's this, he's this, he's that. Um, Trayvon Merrick is a second round pick, right? He's not a top 10 pick. And I think people may hold him to being a top 10 pick for some reason. I don't know what it is. Trayvon Merrick is a second round pick. I think it was the 48th overall pick. Don't quote me on that. I think that's what it was though. Trayvon Merrick, you know, he should be a good football player. He should be able to stop Christian Kirk from scoring a touchdown. But he's not. That's a very hard task, right? In the red zone, one-on-one -on -one situation, you blitz everyone else. It's a very hard situation to stop because offenses design plays every play with an alert guy. If someone blitzes, the quarterback knows exactly where he's going to throw it. And only the receiver and quarterback know, right? The, the safety's in a really bad spot, right? 
Christian Kirk could go the inside, he can go the outside, and the quarterback knows exactly where the guy's going to go. The quarterback's going to throw it, and Trevor Lawrence did that. He threw it before the receiver really even hit his break and turned his head and was able to look back. There's no way Merrick was, was going to stop him. But generally speaking, Merrick was absolutely terrible the rest of the game. He was okay. He did his job on a lot of plays. Um, you know, the Raiders, really, we gave up 24 points on defense. The three points came because the offense filled, right? We were trying to go and, and score and, and potentially win the game, and we filled, and they're already in field goal range at that point. The defense obviously got another stop, um, but they ended up kicking the field goal, right? 24 points isn't so much that we should not be able to win. In fact, I think every single, I don't think any team besides Kansas City has scored more than 24 points. And don't quote me on that, but I think that is fact. The Raiders should be able to win more games if you only give up 24 points, especially with the offense that we have. Devontae Adams, Darren Waller, Huncho Renfro, Josh Jacobs. They should be able to win more football games. I totally understand that those guys haven't been healthy, and I will go ahead and, and give this team a pass, but I think this team really needs to figure out how they're going to move forward. You know, is Mark Davis only going to care about selling tickets or is he going to care about winning Super Bowls? Because at some point he has to care about winning Super Bowls, right? Winning, getting tickets and being a businessman has to get put to the side and you got to look to win Super Bowls. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys need the tape, DM me on Twitter. I'll, we'll get it for you guys. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.